All right, as part of the fluid system of this car, we're gonna talk about the fueling system. The fueling system is arguably the most important, but obviously it's not because if you don't have coolant and oil, it's gonna blow up. Let's start with the back where all of our fueling stuff is really in the front. We don't have our current engine in. Basically, the only thing going on in the front are the fuel rails, the injectors, and then the fuel regulator. So as part of a fuel system, that is a very standard thing to have set up on the engine. The back is where we have the majority of the unique stuff that I'm sure you guys wanna see. So follow me. The lines in the car run underneath through the tunnel with two quick disconnects so that we can easily detach the engine. But in the back, this is where it gets really interesting. Normally, you have a fuel cell with an FIA rated bladder inside and they're usually made of aluminum and then you see some nice CFC unit tops that have a bunch of pumps and surge tanks, but we didn't want to do that on this car because the factory fuel tank on the Corvettes is located to the rear, nice and low, right behind the driver and the passenger with really well protected compartment. And they hold up to like 70 liters of fuel. It was a no-brainer to maintain the stock fuel tanks and then to just use what Nuke Performance has developed with their surge tank setups and everything that I'm gonna talk about here in a second. You're gonna to have to come around on this side, Jack. So where do you start by putting the fuel in? Ah, I just did the fuel cap, so we'll start with that and then we'll kind of go this way. So starting with where you fill it, we actually have the factory cap. We would like to replace this with a nice quick fill cap, but we're still gonna use the door to cover it. From here, it actually goes into the stock fuel tank. The fuel tanks in the Corvette have what's called a crossover tube, and it joins the passenger tank to the fuel tank. We deleted this crossover tube. We machined a plug that blocks it, so we actually only have the one fuel tank, which is about 35 liters of fuel, in this car. That tank is located here. We cut out this top plate so that we had access to the fuel pumps without having to drop the tank. And from this, you're gonna see something that's unique and not on any other Corvette. This is the return line. This is gonna be an important piece of the surge tank puzzle that I'm gonna talk about. But from this pump, we have the lift pump. The lift pump is what puts fuel inside of this three liter surge tank. The lift pump sends fuel through this stainless steel line, which is the factory fuel line, into this line, and then it goes through the new performance 10 micron fuel filter. Then it goes into the ethanol content sensor, also made by new performance with a GM sensor. And from there, it goes inside and fills up the surge tank. What the lift pump is doing is it's filling this surge tank 100% of the time with almost zero fuel pressure. So what happens is the lift pump pumps fuel into the surge tank and the surge tank has an overflow line that goes back to the fuel tank. That means that when the lift pump fills the surge tank completely, it's gonna bleed through the line and go back into the tank with no pressure. So no matter what you're doing, this surge tank will always be full. 100% of the time. And if we ever ran out of fuel inside of the fuel tank itself, you're gonna have a three liter surge tank or supply of fuel that your primary pumps are drawing from, which is 30 seconds to 45 seconds of basically full throttle driving. And that is how much of a delay you have between fuel slosh and all sorts of things that happen inside of these tanks. So what the worst case scenario is with a not well set up fuel system, is you're gonna get fuel slosh or the pump is gonna be sucking up air and fuel during long corners or a lot of cornering back and forth. That can actually cause problems with your fuel pressure and you could actually lean out the engine in times and possibly wreck something. So systems like this are really important to consider and create and make perfect. Another thing to note is the fuel system also uses all PTFE fuel line from Nuke Performance. It's pretty interesting to make. I did a nice video on how to make it that they used on their channel and we put on ours. But the fuel going through the line, it's able to handle a lot more pressure and it's able to take a lot more corrosion. So the PTFE line does not get affected at all 
by the racing fuel that we use, E85, E98, Ignite Red, all this stuff eats up rubber hoses and can have a lot of debris from the rubber getting into your engine, clogging up your injectors, and again, leaning out your engine setup and possibly wrecking some stuff. After the, the lift pump fills the surge tank, I'll talk about the surge tank a little bit over here. So you notice that we have a lot of fuel lines going in and out of this thing. There is two DW400 pumps inside of this, pressurizing our engine. A lift pump on its own would not be able to support a thousand horsepower engine while drifting. So our two primary pumps in here can more than support a thousand. Two of these can roughly support 12 to 1400 horsepower on E85. And all of these lines, there's actually four of them in total. Looking at the top of this surge tank, it kind of Actually, it even confuses me a little bit. We have the inlet from the lift pump going in right here. This line here is what is filling this surge tank. From the surge tank, our pressure out is this line. This is our outlet. So this is gonna be going to our engine. This line is what our, is the return from the engine. So when the pressure regulator has relieved the pressure that it's not using. It returns it inside of here. So we have two lines actually filling this up. We have the leftover from the engine and we have the lift pump. And then this line here, which is our last one, when this is being overfilled, the rest of the, of the fuel is gonna go through this line and back into the tank. And that is basically how this whole system works and is able to sustain a ton of horsepower while cornering a bunch and handling all the G's and keeping the fuel in the engine with a very consistent pressure all the time. This setup is actually not that expensive. If you go into getting an FIA fuel cell, that's a five or eight gallon, which is the most common sizes, maybe even a 10, you're looking at like two grand just for the fuel cell. This setup is actually a lot cheaper than that. We could put up some prices from Nuke Performance website, scroll it on the screen. But really keeping the stop fuel tank if it's in a good location like some of the cars are. It's a pretty good idea because OEM fuel tanks are really high quality materials and uh, they all have the rollover protection safety requirements that an FIA fuel cell would have. The rest of the fuel system, like we said, it's not on the car, but it basically is two lines that go under the transmission tunnel. We have two vibrant quick disconnects for a dash eight. That makes it really easy to pull the engine and not lose a bunch of fuel when we get it apart. And then that goes into a new performance regulator, disperses it to the fuel rails, and then feeds the engine. One note on the fuel rails, we put one pressure line into the regulator, and then we feed each fuel rail individually. Some people feed one fuel rail and then bridge it over to the other fuel rail and then bleed off the end. That isn't the best way to do it. You're gonna have a slight pressure difference between the one bank of injectors versus the other. Obviously this is on a V8. So I like to do two lines coming out of the pressure regulator so that everything is equal and then you bleed one line out of the regulator and that's what comes back to our surge tank to fill it up. It's a lot of information. Hopefully it makes sense to you guys and that is the basics of the fuel system on this Corvette.